So we begin uh, telling you a little bit about our act control system. Uh, I'd like to start by sharing a brief video clip with you. In just a moment, a sudden and very unexpected pressure surge in that fire hose is going to cause serious injury to the firefighter on the ladder. If this fire truck had been equipped with the act control system, this accident would not have happened. As you just saw, firefighting is a very dangerous occupation. In 2016, 68 firefighters were killed while fighting, firefighters, uh, fighting fires, and another 1,540 were seriously injured. So with that in mind, let me tell you a little bit about Act Control. Act Control is a fully automated uh, system that monitors and controls the water pressure in each discharge line on a fire truck. It damps out pressure surges, uh, such as the one you just saw, before they can cause firefighter injuries and do major damage. And thus, Act Control adds a significant level of safety for firefighters who are often in unstable situations. Act Control continuously adjusts pressure in each discharge line so that the fire hose is always charged to the appropriate pressure for the nozzle attached to it. And this greatly enhances the nozzle's firefighting performance. Firefighting nozzles are designed to operate at a very specific water pressure. Too much pressure puts too much water on the fire, most of it just runs off. Too little pressure, and the water may not be able to blast through the cone of intense heat surrounding the fire. With that control, a fire truck will, uh, a fire will be extinguished more quickly, use less water, and do significantly less damage. Today, many municipalities are struggling to find the funds to fully staff their paid fire departments. And with more and more families working at two jobs, volunteer departments also find it increasingly difficult to maintain full rosters. With that control, the pump operator, who until now has been pretty much tied down depending the fire truck's pump and discharge controls, becomes available to help with other tasks. And this essentially adds an extra firefighter to the fire ground team. But most importantly, using that control will save firefighter lives. It will reduce firefighter injuries, and it will limit environmental and property damage. Four individual booklets make up AccuTrol's business plan. These include operational information. Make this go here. This in, uh, include operational information as well as deta uh, detailed financial projections uh, covering the company's first five years of operation. Our financial model is based on capturing 2% of the available market in FY2, 5% in FY3, and an additional 2% in each of the two following years. This will result in our having a positive cash flow early in FY2 and having a significant accumulated net income by the end of FY3. Act controls, gross and net income projections are shown through FY5. Further along in this presentation, we will show you a detailed summary of our five-year financial model. We have also included a printed copy of this summary in the handout material we left on your chairs. Initially, Act Control sales will be concentrated in the United States and Canada. To create a marketing and sales organization to cover this large area would be extremely costly. So we plan to enter into an agreement with one of the several fire equipment sales organizations already well established in the area and commission them to represent AccuTrol. Our preferred partner would, of course, be one of the larger fire truck manufacturers. AccuTrol was developed right here in Vermont working with Kalo Technologies down in Clarem. Extensive testing of our first generation system was undertaken both at Kalo and out in the field. Act Control later was demonstrated for two major fire truck manufacturers. After more testing and more evaluation, one of these expressed a very strong interest in exploring a joint venture relationship with us that uh, they would incorporate Act Control into their vehicles on an exclusive basis for several years and in turn would agree to meet minimum sales projections. We have a letter of interest from that manufacturer and their use alone could well meet our projected sales goals for FY2 and FY3. They, in turn, are owned by the largest builder of airport crash trucks in the United States, 
another potentially strong market for ad control. There is really no direct competition for the ad control system. Both of the leading fire valve manufacturers offer hand-operated power actuators that open and close their valves. However, these push-button operated valve controllers use problematic electric motors, and neither offer any automated control features. Act Control operates with highly reliable hydraulically powered actuators and uses microprocessor controls. Biographies of our management team can be found in the handout we left on your shares. <clears throat> An important part of Act Control is our technical advisory group, comprised of highly experienced members of the firefighting community. We plan to add a chief operating officer to the team toward the end of FY1 and a production manager in FY2. Much of the development work on the second generation of the Ag Control system has already been completed. And this slide shows the scope of the work and the estimated completion times for tasks remaining to be done before we are ready to begin production. We expect Ag Control to remain a local Vermont company. Our plan is to initially operate from the Mint, a makerspace facility in Rutland, and eventually to lease a larger facility in that area as uh, our manufacturing needs pick up. Ag Control will employ six to eight people, and I expect we will increase that number to 12 or more by FY5. Ag Control's founders have invested about $144,000 in the project to date. We need to raise an additional $200,000 in capital to take it through our final development stages and on into full production. We hope to find an investor who will bring extensive business experience to our board and who wants to be an active part of Accutrol in its future. Accutrol might best be described as an intelligent firefighting system. It can save firefighter lives, provide increased firefighter safety, reduce firefighting fatigue, while at the same time enhancing overall firefighting performance. And I'm sure you will have some questions. Okay, who wants to start? Dave Schmidt, then we'll go to Steve. Um, I'm a little stunned there's nothing out there that is in this market already, but that's not my question. Um, but it, it obviously is a great opportunity. My son's a volunteer fireman, so yeah, whatever, whatever it takes to keep him safe. Um, the investment is primarily for tooling and product development expenses, or where's, what's the use of funds for the investment, and how do we get it to market? Uh, the investment is for a developing Generation 2 uh, of the system. Uh, generation 1 has already been out in prototype. Uh, we now need to uh, do, develop Generation 2, which has a number of advanced features built into it. It will have to go through the same prototyping and testing program before we are ready to take it to these manufacturers who have been interested in uh, the product, including the one that has said they would like exclusivity for a couple of years. Steve? Great job, Barry. Uh, nice, to see. nice to see that you, you took our advice. A uh, couple of questions. One is uh, patenting. Yes. Do you have, has it been patented yet, and have you projected the cost for that? Um, the cost of the patenting is built into the um, projections that you see on the screen right now. We will be applying for three patents. Um, Tim, can we get to the patent slide, do you think? With any luck? Thanks much, bye. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> There are three uh, patent applications that we will be making. The uh, first one uh, re relates to the con automatic control of discharge valves on a fire truck. Um, uh, adjusting those valves to <laughs> provide the water pressure that we wish to have on that line and to maintain that pressure under all situations. Uh, that relates to the second uh, patent, which is the automatic, automatic uh, regulation of pressure delivered at the fire nozzle. 
that's a very important factor because when a fire truck discharges water from the fire truck, we'll say at 150 pounds per square inch going into the hose, depending on the length of the hose, the size of the hose, and what it's made out of, the pressure delivered at the fire nozzle will not be the 100 PSI that we had out of the truck. So our system is able to calculate uh, the pressure that is necessary at the nozzle and it will increase the pressure at the truck to provide the proper pressure at the nozzle taking into account all these losses. And the third one is that we have developed a method of measuring the flow through a fire hose that's necessary to our uh, operation. Uh, there are flow meters available on the market today. They don't work very well. They have a lot of problems. They require a lot of recalibration. Uh, we have developed a method of measuring flow through a fire hose uh, with none of these injections. So these are three patents that we'll be fighting for. Good, thanks. The other... Yeah, you got another question. Got the, the, other, the other piece of my question was, uh, unfortunately, you're elderly like I am. <laughs> you're, you seem to be one of the, much of the brains behind the organization. What's your personal end game here? What, what's your plan? <laughs> well, uh, Somebody else at one of our meetings uh, said something about two of the three uh, partners in this venture being uh, over the hill. And uh, so Tim and the other guy uh, are those two people we have to worry about replacing. Uh, Bob McDermott is not here with us, Bob. Uh, wound up having some very uh, serious eye surgery today, uh, so he was not able to come. Uh, Bob and I uh, both plan to work with the company over the next five years, uh, bring in people to take our places, and move them up to do the work, and then we can retire to the board of directors and just take in our money and have a good time. <laughs> Gary. Is, is, is that how it works? You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Karin, I didn't realize that's how it worked. <laughs> I'm working for you. And so my, my question is, and I, I don't really understand much about the manufacturing industry as such, right? I'm in the software business right now. So, um, but I can't help but wonder, given all of the, the liabilities, the production, the manufacturing, the distribution, the sales, all of that, why, or maybe you have considered file your patents and license your technology and build your business off of licensing, not off of being in the business of manufacturing. Build it off your your intellectual property. Have you, have you given any thought to, to that kind of a model? We've given a lot of thought to it, and that's not the way we want to go. <laughs> <laughs> that was an awesome answer. All right. <laughs> Mine's real quick. Uh, one cool product that's saved people's lives. Is that a is that something that you can retrofit to older? Absolutely. Okay, so you can go backwards or forwards. Backwards or forwards, absolutely. Scott. Uh, to, first of all, I'll forgive my ignorance. I know nothing about firefighting. But the competitors, units you showed up there, if I'm not mistaken, those are actually manufacturers of fire trucks units, correct? They are units that are made by companies that sell them to the manufacturers of fire trucks. Okay, so for, that, that was my question. Two companies in the United States and Canada that make the so-called competitive units, which really aren't competitive because they don't do the same thing. Akron Brass uh, out in uh, Ohio, Worcester, Ohio, and uh, Elkhart Brass out in Elkhart, Indiana. And then my other question, you mentioned that you could the way you described it, you could displace some labor um, by not having the firemen on the truck. Is there a risk that labor pushes back on this because it's potentially a threat? Uh, you're talking about union labor, I think, not volunteer labor, uh, because uh, union labor accounts for only a very small percentage of the firefighters in the United States. But no, it doesn't eliminate any jobs. It, something like this makes the person uh, who is operating the pump available to help with other things around the fire truck. And as a pump operator myself for years, and I know Steve has run into this many times, people would keep running up to you and say, where do I find the left-handed gudgeon pin? And you tell them that the left-handed gudgeon pin is in the right rear compartment. And then they run back and they say, no, it's not there. 
So now you, the pump operator, have to leave the pump and go find the left-handed gadget pin for it. That's a very dangerous situation today. With the Act Control system, it's not going to be that dangerous anymore. Oh, Judy, quick question. I know nothing about this. I know nothing about this, but I didn't hear, and maybe I missed it, is there a cost? I mean, what, was there any model for what this is going to actually cost either the trucks who are going to purchase it or the fire departments who are going to purchase it? You, you didn't read your little handout very well. <laughs> <laughs> I seven an answer to your question. So, so that's what let, let me ask you. Let me, <laughs> I have homework. Let me ask, answer your question. Uh, we can sell these advanced control units for approximately the same price as what's available on the market today. Which, by the way, is about $3,000 per unit. Uh, $3,000 to $3,400 available on the market today, and we can sell these in the same price range. And I just have one follow-up. Um, I know nothing about this either, but snow guns at ski resorts, is it the same kind of pressure that comes out of them, and would that be another market for something like this? I, I suppose I it would, in seeing I, I live at a ski resort, you, uh, the largest one in the state, by the way. Um, Mad River? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a shareholder, so I had to. There is a market there, and we have not explored it, but there definitely is a potential market there, and I'm sure there are others. There's a big market in the marine business, fire boats and, and military ships that need automated firefighting equipment on them. So, we're out of time. Great. Thanks, Ray. Thank